Hello and welcome to The Great Beyond, an Is This Good Companion pod where we follow up on last week's episode, answer listener questions, and catch up with each other. The person I'm catching up with is, of course, Jason Doyle. Hello. Hi, JD. Thanks for coming this week. Well, thanks for having me. It's a pleasure to be here. Uh, I'm glad that it is a pleasure to be here. I'm glad you weren't too busy with your new podcast that I, I haven't finished yet, but I did listen to 30 <laughs> minutes of. Um, I believe it's called <laughs> Settling Petty Scores with My Wife. You could find it on the No Dunks <laughs> feed. <laughs> yeah, that's basically the concept of the show. Uh, uh, yeah, so it's basically, it's JD's Pickleball Podcast, which he hosts with his wife, Rachel. Yeah. Uh, they're both super into pickleball. Of course, Rachel is A, more into pickleball, and B, vastly superior to your skill level. A hundred percent true, Yes. Uh, and you guys have a pickleball podcast, which basically devolves into you being upset at her that she hasn't prepared or that her right. scribblings, she can't read her own <laughs> scribblings on her notes page. She's upset at you for getting mad at her. And it is, I think the core of the show is really uh, squabbling with your wife. That is the core of the show. Uh, people seem to enjoy it. Everybody seems to enjoy it, except for me, because I'm getting <laughs> squabbled at. <laughs> and I'm, I'm having to squabble as well. So, no, it's fun. It's a lot of fun. Uh, so go listen to that. But uh, I don't know if that feeds into this question I'm about to ask you, but did anything good or not good happen to you this week? Uh, yeah, lots of good things. I got a new paddle in pickleball. I mentioned that on the show. Um, mm -hmm. But really the big news is that I went to see Duran Duran last week after we last spoke. Uh, and it was it was something. Okay, so the word you didn't use was awesome or exciting or the highlight of my year or nostalgic. You said something. So to me, that means you enjoyed parts of it and other parts of it left you feeling unsettled. Yeah. It, have you ever heard of Nile Rodgers? Uh, have I ever heard of Niall Rogers, the best rhythm guitar player of all time? Maybe, perhaps, <laughs> certainly in his style. Chic, Le Freak. Yeah. 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 We're out tonight to get lucky. Yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. Uh, he no, wrote, I never heard of him. <laughs> he wrote a sh shitload of songs. He produced yeah. a shitload of songs, mm -hmm. uh, and he was the opening act for Duran Duran. Okay, so it was him and his band, and this guy. He is a producer who's been living in the shadows, you know, behind uh, whoever he's producing th this whole time, and he is out to tell everybody that he wrote all these songs and he is like <laughs> taking revenge on everybody, including Duran Duran, who he uh, produced and uh, he opened for and literally blew them away. Like it was one of the most, in it, it was by far the most incredible opening act I've ever seen and completely upstaged Duran Duran. Like, but hold it, on, this guy didn't have the balls to play Duran Duran songs he, while he was opening for Duran Duran. No, 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 no. It was like, uh, he starts the show with uh, Le Freak, so, ah, freak out. That's the first thing you hear. Mm -hmm. Then you hear, we are family. Mm -hmm. You hear, I'm going out. Uh, 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 uh. Yeah, it was, uh, and it, like, I've never seen an opening band just completely bring the crowd to their feet, like, it was basically sold out show at State Farm. It was amazing. And then it, the, he did uh, two David Bowie songs and he did oh, one. Oh, because he did, uh, he did what, Fame and um, uh, Let's Dance? Let's Dance. And well, he did, uh, he may have done Fame, but he is, he, the most famous thing he's done is pro he produced uh, Let's Dance, the album. Okay. So, uh, so he did Let's Dance and Modern Love. Oh, okay. Yeah. And, God, I uh, love Modern Love. Oh, God. What, like, it, incredible uh and then it ended and then we're like well all we have to look forward to now are duran duran songs you, know? <laughs> you see this reminds me of how you for the past mm, i don't know 10 or 15 years more like 15 years actually have been behind the scenes of right. no dunks of yeah. the starters of the basketball jones and here you are blowing them off the stage right now. <laughs> That's what I'm trying to do. I'm a, being in my own uh, Nile Rogers. And then, okay, so then I'm like, oh god, these guys—they have their work cut out for them. Like we we were even discussing, like, uh, it, was this a mistake? Like, did 
was he is he like just a local guy and you know how sometimes they'll just have like a local mm-hmm. band open up for you and and it, this was a huge blunder on on Duran Duran's p- part you know like we accidentally booked the best band in the world to open for us but that wasn't the case they've been touring for a long time and obviously they have history together um uh, he produced Notorious and all in that album for them but uh yeah, it was crazy. And then and then Duran Duran, you're just like shaking your head and they're like, don't do it, guys. Don't do it. Lights come down. Fucking new song. Like n- like nobody had ever heard of it. Like The opener was a the new song? The opener was a new song. And let me tell you, it was a goddamn dirge. Like, it was like, oh, it was so awful. And also, <laughs> another thing that I noticed and I thought, because we we were pretty far back, but we had there were good seats, but we were far back, and on the jumbotron or whatever, you know, they have you you can see that they had like basically Nile was just in full HD, and it was actually pretty good. And I don't know how they do it, but it we were about far enough that I thought, well, this isn't going to match up. But there's some sort of technology, or they have it timed like frames or whatever. So it was just amazing that they did that, but. When Duran Duran came on, they decided to put like a fucking Instagram filter or something on the their the cameras, so it was treated, affected, and completely out of sync, and it looked awful. And I was like, these guys, I thought that these guys don't want to be seen in HD, right? Because right. they're fucking old, like they're old guys. Duran Duran started in 1978. Like okay, well, so so this is what I want to know. Give us a scene report. I want to know. <laughs> <laughs> Who goes to an arena show, a Duran Duran arena show, at this okay. point in 2023? Yeah, it's a great. It's actually more diverse than I thought. I thought it was going to be myself and older people, but uh-huh. there were a lot of young people there, actually. So okay. that was kind of cool to see. Uh, the but would you say there. mostly older? Mostly older, yeah. Mostly yeah. you and older. Yeah, it wasn't like a Jimmy Buffett concert or anything. Like it wasn't my parents, obviously. But mm-hmm. um, yeah, like but the forties and fifty year olds were out for sure. And when that happens, is there this vibe of like trying to recapture youth? So it's like people <laughs> that are like in their late fifties, sixties, getting kind of sloppy drunk because they're <laughs> out of practice or taking a few too many hits off the devil's <laughs> lettuce. Is it that kind of vibe? Uh, it certainly was for me. Like I was drinking. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, JD, you didn't try weed again for the first time in 20 years, did you? No, no weed that night, but uh, I was drinking like you're at State Farm. So it's just like, oh, what do I get? Like, it's just like the most limited um, array. And I didn't want to drink beer cause I don't want to be pissing all night. So mm-hmm. I like double Jack Daniels and Cokes. Like that's like my, the drink of my high school in my early twenties. So it was just like, all right. This is this is pretty cool, actually. <laughs> but but yeah, Duran Duran was fine. They were fine. They didn't play my song that I wanted to hear, which was uh, Union of the Snake, of course. Okay, I don't see. I don't know Duran Duran that well. Like for me, the one album that I owned of theirs was was it called Ordinary World or was that just the single from it? Yeah, you know what? That was Rachel's era as well. You guys are more similar in age and they played Ordinary World and another hit from that song. Uh, that there's was too much information. It wasn't that. Uh, uh, there was another banger from that album. Or not, yeah. I mean, I guess Ordinary World's kind of a mid-tempo yeah. slow song. But That's, a, that's, uh, a, that's actually a great song. Like, oh, are, I mean, it's it's amazing. Yeah. So they but, played, uh, but like, And then, of course, I know like Hungry Like the Wolf and Rio yeah. and all the classics. But, yeah. oh, Come Undone, is that what Yes, it is? yes, yeah. Yeah. Okay. But yeah, they were never my thing, and, and uh, I think I missed it. Yeah. You know, The Reflex, Union of the Snake, that kind of thing. It was great. Great stuff. Uh, so you were hungover the next day? A little bit, yeah. Okay. But not in a bad way. It was so, more like my ears, like, fucking hell, man. Oh, you didn't wear your little... Uh, <laughs> never. Ear- never. Why am I trying to call them ear pods? No. What are they called? <laughs> uh, earbuds? Uh, bu- no. Uh, ear plugs. Ear plugs. Ear plugs. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Woo! Uh, see, so it's interesting because I thought that the thing you were going to say was good or not good, depending how it went, was Father's Day, which was this past Sunday, and you, of course, have two boys. So, right? Uh, can you give me the Father's Day report? Not much to report. Okay. Uh, <laughs> you know, we played pickleball. Uh, the kids played with us for like twenty minutes or whatever, and then they went. They, we were at the Y, so they just went and worked out and did their teenage boy stuff, and then I just played pickleball in the hot sun for three hours. So, you've had how many Father's Days to this point? 
I guess this was this is my seventeenth. This is your seventeenth. So uh, sorry, have, si- sixteenth, sixteenth. Sorry. Have there been some versus others where you felt like ah today I feel adequately <laughs> appreciated for all that I've done, and then some other days you're like eh they didn't knock it out of the park this year, <laughs> or is it just a general like. Nothing you could possibly do could recognize the sacrifices <laughs> I've made for you. No, I mean, yeah, you know me. I think uh, most holidays are stupid, it's especially Father's Day. And uh, I like, you know, I mean, I basically want to be left alone on Father's Day. That's my that's my wish. Um, that 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 that's never a problem either. Like nobody really wants to. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, me. I want to be left alone, but I want you to know that I want to be left alone. And it, for it to be inconvenient for you to leave the house, but for you to then say, Dad, we know that all you want is some peace and quiet on your big special day. <laughs> so right. we will leave, even though it's 138 degrees outside. <laughs> we will stand in the backyard yeah. uh, while you play God of War Ragnarok. <laughs> yes, exactly. That I mean, that would be the the best Father's Day ever. But no, it was great. It was uh, it, it was fun, and I got a new racket, a new or sorry, a new paddle, um, which was great. But I, I wonder if the people listening to this are more dads or more people. I guess children. sons, and daughters. <laughs> sons. <laughs> <laughs> we got to drop a poll. Are you dad or are you son? <laughs> so, give advice to the sons here. Okay. And I'm including myself in this. Like, how, how would you adequately show appreciation to dad on this day? Is it, is it a series of magical words? Is it an incantation? Like, or, or, again, is there just no way to encapsulate it in a day? Uh, I don't think I, I don't need to be shown appreciation. You know what I mean? Like, but don't you feel like most of the time you're taken for granted? Oh, sure. But that's your job as a father, isn't it? Right. So I guess what I've always wondered is 364 days of the year, you're taken for granted. Then you have this one day of year where everyone actually stops and goes, oh, we're actually honoring you. But what you're saying is ain't nothing you can do on that one day to make up for the other 364 where you totally shat on me and ruined my life. I used to have friends. I used to be thin. I used to have muscles that protruded and... Yeah, <laughs> as if <laughs> an oily frame, as if I was an Adonis, right. and you came along and ruined everything. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I the my fatness is my own fault, but everything else is <laughs> on point. <laughs> <laughs> and and do you do you sort of feel like there won't be a reckoning for your kids until they themselves are fathers, yes. and then they go like, oh shit, now we we get it, Dad. Yeah, yeah, now that's that's the hope. They, it's just pay it forward. Pay right, it forward. Right. Yeah. And if they never have kids, they'll never know. They'll never know. Yeah, exactly. Sort of sad. And that's my, my, my best advice to them is never have kids. Just don't do it. Is that your actual advice to them? No, of course not. Oh, okay. Okay, okay. Good, 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 good. Because uh, just from a, an economy point of view, sort of as we get older, I'd like for us to be producing more children so they can pay uh, into the tax system so we yeah. can have uh, social security, pensions, right. things, things like that. Yeah. Um, my, I, had, I did something good this week. Okay. That's that I'm surprised because I, I, I knew I was faced with the situation before it happened and I thought to myself... I'm not going to be able to stop myself. And here's what I did. I had a meeting, a professional business meeting, with someone named Chris Martin. Like, okay. And I did not mention it once. <laughs> I did not do any Coldplay references. And this guy was British, JD. Oh, my God. So he had the voice. <laughs> His name was Chris Martin. Yeah. And I thought, going to this meeting, I'm like, I'm not going to be able to stop myself. You know, and like, I, I haven't followed Coldplay since, you know, probably the early 2000s. But I have to say, like, when Parachutes came out in, like, I think it was 2000, I loved that album. It's right. the one that Yellow's on. And yeah. then the second one, A Rush of Blood to the Head. I remember we were in college together. I remember uh, being in Las Vegas on a family trip because my dad ha- was working there. And I remember right. going to like some music world or whatever shop in the Venetian, you know, back when they still <laughs> sold CDs. And I was like, I saw it on the rack and I was like, Oh my God, it's out. For- I've been waiting years for this <laughs> and buying it. And Oh man, clocks, the scientist, <laughs> but I didn't say shit to this guy, um, which I was proud of myself for, but it reminded me that during the pandemic, uh, also for, I was in Denver for work, and I kept having to go down to the hotel 
desk to print stuff. And it was always the same guy there. And on like the third day, so he definitely knew who I was. And, yeah. Uh, I looked at his name tag. I was, I was just standing there waiting. And his name was Will Smith. Oh, God. Okay. A, wh- a white guy named Will Smith. Yeah. And I couldn't, I had, so I had to ask. And I just thought, like, I'm not going to make a reference because that's <laughs> probably what annoys this guy the most. So I'm just going to ask him. I just said, so, Hey, you getting jiggy with it? Something well, like that. Well, no. <laughs> <laughs> How come you didn't say <laughs> Bienvenidos a Denvero <laughs> when I checked in? <laughs> um,. <laughs> I'm just standing there like, bosses just don't understand. Am I right? <laughs> so I just said, the name o- over the course of your life, positive or negative? And he said, huh? I said, your name, positive or negative? He's like, my name, why? I, I don't. I said, Will Smith, like the actor. He goes, oh, yeah, it never comes up. Really? So now I went from like, well, I'm not going to ask this guy to like, <laughs> I'm gonna, f- I'm gonna fucking nail this guy. What are you? It's never come up that your name is Will Smith. This was this was post slap, I think. So how are you gonna tell me that? First of all, yeah. one of the biggest actors of our generation, and this guy seemed to be about my age, dating back to like the Fresh Prince, like the yeah. '90s. Like this guy's been world famous for 30 years, plus the the music, plus now we're going into the movie career, Independence Day, and and all. Uh, like Men in Black and all that stuff. And a music career. And then the like, slap. And then the slap just exactly. happened probably maybe six months before that. It's never come up. It doesn't come up very much that your name is Will Smith. You would think that like one out of three people would flinch after the slap every time they were at the front desk, you know, when they ha- he handed them their room key. They flinch, right? Like Yeah, when you consider the kind slap. of traveling salesman <laughs> – bro that's wheeling his carry-on through he's not gonna be like oh oh, don't hit me man don't hit me okay (laughs) uh i should have said uh how often do people make fun of your wife (laughs) (laughs) but then i i sort of thought will smith has to be one of the most common names you think for a white guy for sure yeah Yeah, there's probably like one in 30 guys is named Will Smith. Yeah. I mean, Smith, most common last name you have to figure. Yeah, sure. In this country, I would think. Uh, Well, yeah. Okay, so here's another thing based on a name. Did you see that I was trending on Saturday? On Twitter? I did not. Okay, well, I guess you don't check my stories. (laughs) Because I screen capped it. So I look at, I I open Twitter on Saturday, and it literally says, now trending, Matty O. Matty O. Yeah. And I was like, huh. the f-? So, uh, my first reaction was horror. Like, what did I do? What did I tweet? What did I say on this stupid show? Uh, you know, when we're past six minutes in, I forget that anyone else is listening to it. And I was like, Jesus, did I? I've, I've gone and got myself canceled. <laughs> I just Justine say code myself. Wow. But then my second thought was like, all right, don't be so conceited yeah. no one knows who yeah. you are no one cares about you enough to tweet about you <laughs> so i clicked on it and of course uh, because this is just how good twitter is it takes me a long while to figure out why Matteo is trending like don't right. you feel like if something's trending you should be able to read the first tweet and understand why it's trending yeah you need like a rotten tomatoes consensus style thing yes at the top. exactly yeah. exactly a little curation elon that's all we're asking for <laughs> but of course anyway dig deep and I hit a grand slam home run for okay. the Atlanta Braves because apparently there's this guy, uh, Matt Olson. <laughs> oh, uh, not to uh, be your, confused with your agent from the Creative yeah. Arts Agency, Matt, Matt Olson. But yes, uh, left-handed first baseman for the Atlanta Braves. He hit a grand slam on a 3-0 count. I mean, wow. three balls, no strikes. It's very rare, J.D. Because yeah. at that point, you, you should be taking. Exactly. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. I was trending, was scared. But, but everything was fine. And it was a positive trend for uh, Matt Olson as well. It wasn't oh, he very wasn't excited for Matt Olson. Yeah. I'll tell you this. Not many people are named Matt Austin, O-S-T-E-N. No. No. Uh, almost no one. But if you got famous, there would probably be a ton of Jason Doyles. Yeah, there's, a, there's like an Australian motorbike rider named Jason Doyle, I think. Do you think people go up to him and say, where's your beard, man? <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure it happens all the time to him. Um, 
All right, so oh, one last quick little question here. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to think about the best way to bring this up. So, so let's say you tell me, ah, Matt, uh, yeah, some bad news. Rachel lost her job. Okay? Rachel, okay. your wife, of course, that you host yeah. this Pickleball podcast. Right. Which is her job, the Pickleball podcast. <laughs> okay, well, let's say, so let's say you fire her. You say, yeah, Rachel lost her job. Okay. Then I'm hanging out with Rachel, and she says to me, huh, yeah. Had a rough week, lost my job. Are you the kind of person that pretends that you did not know that information? Hmm. Like, should I say, oh, yeah, I heard. What a bummer. Or do right. I go, oh, no, really? <laughs> so basically, when your partner, when, when your friend tells you something about their partner, right. do you pretend you don't know when you then later hear about it from, that, from the actual person it happened to? I... Uh, it depends on the circumstance. I think that if <laughs> – okay, so in this scenario, say that you've been sitting with her for like 10 minutes, you mm -hmm. know, and it hasn't come up in that 10 minutes. I think I'm pretending. Because otherwise – Because otherwise I should have like mentioned you it. You should have said it. Yeah. It's like we've been sitting here this whole time and you knew I got fired. Right, right, But right, you didn't right. say anything and then it, it makes it seem like it's trivial to her. You know what I mean? Like – or to you that she got fired. Right. But what I tend to think is I start thinking, oh, shit, JD told me this in confidence. I'm right. not supposed to know this because right. maybe if we're 20 minutes in, I'm like, she's not going to mention the job thing? So then I start thinking – Oh, she's not going to mention it. She doesn't want anyone to know. And JD right. just ruined things. Right, right. Yeah. And so so I, I, think, I think I'm pretending. Yeah, yeah we're pretending. Yeah. I, just like, I'd like to one day catalog all the ways we lie to people. Like, we're like, well, I'm an honest person. All, <laughs> honesty is the best policy. I would just like to catalog all the ways in which we lie to each other and it's just perfectly accepted. <laughs> and to not, and, and to be honest is actually worse. Right, right. Oh, in that sense, it's worse for sure because you're not. You, you have to protect your friend because you don't know if they're going to get in trouble, right? Bro From code. Bro code. Right. You know, <laughs> I, <laughs> can, you, can you maintain bro code if you don't identify as a bro? <laughs> I mean, you're just looking out for your bud. It doesn't yeah, have to yeah. be a bro. It could be a, yeah, a, yeah, a, yeah. a wife. Totally. A friend vault. A vault. Yeah, a vault. Yeah. So, yeah. But that kind of lying's okay, I guess. It's I, great. Yeah. It's great. Why did That's something why happen? Why are you lying this? more? No, it just something like that did happen, and I'm like, oh, I wonder if the person did know or was actually just pretending that they oh, didn't I know. I see. I see. Yeah, yeah, but we'll never know. <laughs> uh, all right, quick bit of housekeeping. We do have merch. Go to isthisgoodpod.com, and of course, send us a picture of you in the merch. We mm -hmm. like. We're visual learners. We like to see. We eat with our eyes, not mm -hmm. to say that we want to eat you, but. <laughs> You get what I'm saying. Join our Patreon, patreon.com slash is this good. Uh, and uh, there still is that free trial going, so you can sign up and see if you like it. Now, I will say, JD, our live stream is coming up. So that's for the greats and above. Right. And that's where that will be. Should have written this down. Uh, the 29th? 8.30 p.m. Thursday, the 29th. Nice. Okay. Looking so that's where that. we all hop on a Zoom, and we just have a nice, fun, casual conversation. You can ask us questions or... Mostly people just talk to each other. We jump in. It's super fun. So that is, again, June 29th. It's a Thursday. It's 8.30 Eastern, 5.30 Pacific. I don't know how many of you are on the, are on the West Coast, but I am. So that's why I mention it. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, definitely come join us for that. Send us emails at isthisgoodpod at gmail.com. Could always use some good emails. Subscribe on YouTube. Leave a review on Apple Podcasts. Uh, all right, J.D., we got to do some quick follow-up. Okay. A, a super quick one. Remember we had an email, this was probably a couple weeks ago now, about a woman who was saying, I talk to my dog in full sentences mm -hmm. just so other people know that my dog's being a dick. But then yeah. I kind of do it in private too, and it, is this good? And we gave our ruling, and you know, I wasn't coming from a place of experience, but now that I've been living at Jill's <laughs> for over a week now, yeah, I said something to the dog in the most <laughs> normal voice. It... it, it chilled me to my core. Jill was out <laughs> and the dog was just kind of pacing around. And I was like, I don't know what you, what you, what you're doing. I don't know what you want from me. And I literally just looked at him and I said, I said, Hey bud, sorry, I can't help you out, but your mom's coming home soon. <laughs> I, as soon as I said, I was like, your mom's coming home yeah. soon. Like, no, that's not your mom. 
But it's it's in, basically what I'm saying is I now have a lot more sympathy for it because to me it seems impossible to have a dog and not speak to. And them. that's yeah, you have to talk. To them. So you, I can't remember exactly what you said, but you do talk to. Uh, I talk to Hazel. I rarely talk to. You Cosmo. rarely talk to. Her. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. But Hazel, <laughs> Hazel's my girl. Uh, so we were also talking about Trader Joe's and their ethnic names for their products. Right. So I was I couldn't remember many of them, but I did find uh, a full list. Okay. okay. Here we go. All right. So Mexican food, Trader Jose's. Okay. So if you don't know what I'm talking about, Trader Joe's uh, on a lot of their packaged food, they'll put a name. Well, they'll put Trader Joe's on everything, but for mm-hmm. certain things that they consider to be you know ethnic products, products from different corners of the world. They will rename Joe to different things. And we were trying to figure out, <laughs> is this okay? Uh, yeah. But here's the list. Mexican food, Trader Jose's. Okay. Chinese food, Trader Ming's. Right away, I'm like, you know how like Charles in English is Carlos in Spain? Yeah. So that, that seems okay. Joe is Jose. Yeah. Probably in Spanish. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to guess Ming is not Joe in China. No. <laughs> China. Why I'm going to go ahead and guess there's no equivalent for Joe. Why not Cho? That's okay, good question. I think it's more of a last name. Okay. Yeah. And I think they're probably thinking Ming, Ming Dynasty, like that's some sort of regal right. thing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay, this one, I'm, this one I'm confused about. So fl- on flour and bagels, they okay. call it Baker Yosef. Yosef? Like, now, is that Israeli or... Well, like... I was going to say, as a Jew, I feel okay to speak freely on this. The, okay, they're saying please. flour and bagels are the domain of the Jew. Yes. Yosef, J-O-S-E-F, it feels more just like German to me. And uh, of course, there were a lot of Jews in Germany. Yeah. At one point, there were a lot more. Yes, yes. Uh, but uh, <laughs> there, I, I don't know. I would like maybe like a... Trader Jaime or something, just go all the way with it. That's what I say. Yeah, if you're going to do it, do it. If you're going to do it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Italian food is Trader Giotto. Okay. Joe to Giotto. Uh, I'm pretty sure it's Giuseppe is Joe, but okay. Japanese food, this is a weird one. Trader Joe San. Joe dash San. And I, I, San. Like like Daniel, Daniel San from. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I think it's just like an honorific. I think it just means like Mr. So this would be like. Trader Mr. Joe. <laughs> right. <laughs> ugly Kid Joe. Trader Ugly Kid Joe. Yeah. Uh, Middle Eastern food is Arabian Joe's. So this one, they didn't even try to come up with a name. Yeah. They were just Arabian Joe's. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently, they have New England specialties like clam chatter under the name Pilgrim Joe's. They have beer called Yosef's Brow. <laughs> oh, God. They have French food and soaps called Trader Jacques. Okay, that one I'm okay, okay. with. Yeah. Uh, and then, okay, yeah, these ones don't really count. Children's food is Joe's Kids or whatever. Right. Frozen entrees, some of them are called Joe's Diner. But anyways, I was reading up on it, and there was a petition saying, like, hey, you really should change these. And at first they were like, Trader Joe's bows to no petition. We think these are fun little names. Uh, it said, what did it say? Uh, created many decades ago, we believe these represent lighthearted efforts at inclusion, adding that our customers still like them. We thought then and still do that this naming of products could be fun and show appreciation for other cultures. But anyways, there was a petition sometime during the pandemic. Mm -hmm. They said, we're going to change some of these, not because of the petition. We're just, we were planning on doing it. And then I (laughs) read another article that was like, nah, we're not not doing it. So I said, come up with new ones. Yeah, just to freshen it up. Yeah, freshen it up. Yeah. That's Uh, time. It's time. I think it's time. Yeah. Uh, another thing I wanted to follow up on, we were talking on the TAS episode, which dropped on Monday. Mm-hmm. Great episode. Go back and listen to it. Uh, in the unpopular opinion segment, the unpopular opinion was TV show intros were much better in the early 2000s and the 90s than they are today. Of course, the irony being there that everyone says that this has been the prestige era of television, the best television. But this person is saying, even though the television might be better, the intros are getting worse. Right. And the Discord which you can join if you join at patreon.com slash is this good, was humming. Sarah G brought this point up. She asked, is the skip intro feature to blame for TV intros being less fun than they used to be? So many people binge with online streaming platforms, so maybe showrunners figured, eh, not, let's not spend a ton of time on this intro because they're just going to skip it anyways. 
What do you think of that as a, an explanation? I, I think it has the opposite effect, actually. I think it makes me, as a producer, I want to make it such a banger and so great that uh, it's unskippable. You know what I mean? Right. So you're saying, I, I'll take the challenge and I'll do something like the, like the White Lotus theme song that went viral. Yeah. So Nobody's skipping that. Whether it's the music or... Because I would say the, the White Lotus, like, the visuals aren't yeah. that interesting. Yeah. It's but the song's that, cool. When once that kicks in, whew, the it's a banger. The uvulating? Yes, the uvulating. That's what that's called? <laughs> yeah, uh, I mean, like, the, the Narcos, uh, the original Narcos, I never, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. never skipped it. I that is a good song. It. It's a great song. It's a great, uh, it's a great intro visually. It's just awesome. And, it, you know, I could watch three Narcos in a row, and I'd still, I'd still watch the intro. So that's the challenge. I think people are trying to rise to the challenge. Yeah, I think the conversation I have in my head is uh, it's so easy to skip this intro, so I should just skip it. Just get to the content. Yeah. But then another part of my brain goes, no, savor it. Let this, let, this, let this be the hand that someone's holding. <laughs> Yeah. Guiding you into the ocean do as you're just dipping a toe. Right. You know, like let it let it set the table for you. Yeah. So I find when I really wanna like if it's a show I care about, I will watch it regardless of whether it's good or not, just to get in the mood. Even if you're binging. Even if I'm binging, yeah. yeah. But the, I find the things that I binge are often things that I don't even like that much. <laughs> Why are you binging them then? Well, because if if it's on uh, Max or HBO Max. Yeah. No, just Max now. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, Zaz. We won't make that mistake again. It's so much better. Thank you for this new Max. Yeah. I love seeing the Dr. Pimple Popper there. It's much I've watched, better. I've watched a lot of Dr. Pimple Poppers, actually. How do, you, how do you... So you're obviously not squeamish about that, then. Uh, no, I'm not. But Rachel is. But she's also... She's like... She, she, I guess mad when I hit play on it, but then she will sit there and watch the entire episode, like through, through like one finger, two fingers or whatever, you know, like, yeah, I mean, I get that instinct of like, you smell a bad smell. You're like, Oh, the fuck was that? And then you go, oh, okay. Yeah. I just want to smell that again. Yeah. Uh, yeah. but I, I can't even do it for that kind of stuff. That like it will haunt me I, I, when I close my eyes, and I, I will think about Lansing and the pus and the grossness. It's so even satisfying, they, though. No, it's not. I, even they had that commercial during the NBA Finals. You remember the oh, games yes. that were on TNT? They had those commercials. It was like a guy with like <laughs> boils on his head. I don't even want to know what it was. But right. just seeing that, like deformities. Unfortunately, like I'm just. Uh, they're not fun for me. No. If I lived in the time P.T. Barnum, I wouldn't be going seeing the guy drive a metal stake into his brain. Or... Okay, that I'm not into for sure. Like, yeah, a sword swallowing grosses me out. That kind of thing. Or, or but... like this person has two heads. Right. You yeah. know, but it's just a goiter and they sharpied a smiley face on it. I don't know whatever they did. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what they were doing back yeah. then. Yeah, I'm not into that, but if that goiter was to be lanced, I'm 100% into that. Can Honestly, you lance a goiter? <laughs> see, P.T. Barnum could have never known that in the modern age we would enjoy seeing pimples get popped. If he oh, know, yeah. had known, that would have definitely been a booth at the carnival, for sure, right? Oh, 100%. God. But you wouldn't have been able to tour. like You know what I mean? Like, Let's say you, you had big boils right. <laughs> or whatever. <laughs> Then you lance them. What would you do at the next stop in Peoria? Yeah, that's it. You got to find. You'd a have new to get guy. a new person. Yeah. Crazy. Really? Man. Maybe that's why you didn't do it. Maybe that's you thought probably. of it, thought logistically, <laughs> can't get this done. Uh, we'll have to just go with the person that sets themselves on fire. I'm sorry. Right. <laughs> <laughs> we don't have. We don't have the technology. Uh, all right. Let's move on to the comment of the week. So. This is actually from a couple shows ago where we were talking about Congo, the movie. There's a scene where they get attacked by hippos, and I mentioned that, you know, hippos are the most dangerous animal on Earth. They kill the most people every year. Yeah. So Jake Demedjeros, this is via YouTube, said, 
Two episodes ago, you said hippos kill more people than crocodiles. This is not true. Crocodiles by far kill more people than hippos. The whole hippos are the most dangerous animal in Africa myth has always confused me. Even in Zambia, which has a huge hippo population up near Victoria Falls and has had some pretty gnarly hippo attacks, croc fatalities outnumber hippo fatalities something like eight to one. Anyways, none of this matters, and I'm two episodes late. Great episode, five stars. <laughs> so I thought, I'm going to do a quick fact check. Yeah. I'm going to do the most minimal research. I'm going to look at the first search result, yeah. and I'm going to judge based on that. So this is a BBC article from 2016 about mm -hmm. the most dangerous animals on Earth. Yeah. So let's dig into it. Hippos. Ungainly as it is, the hippopotamus is the world's deadliest large mammal. So I'm already like, well, they're putting a lot of caveats in here. Yeah. Land and mammal. Kills an estimated 500 people per year in Africa. Hippos are very aggressive creatures, and they have very sharp teeth. And then it adds this dumb little dumb shit fact. You would not want to get stuck under one. No. At yeah. 2,750 kilograms, they can crush a human to death. Yeah, no kidding. Yeah. I, I mean, I wouldn't want to get trapped under a car either. And a car right. wouldn't eat me. But, okay, so keep that in mind. 500 people per year in Africa. Yeah. That but I think they're like only in lot. Africa, so that, that makes sense. Yeah. All right, now let's talk crocs. Yeah. In Africa alone, there are several hundred crocodile attacks on humans per year, between a third to half of which are fatal. Many take place in small communities and are not widely reported. Worldwide, crocs are estimated to kill 1,000 humans per year. So, double. Okay. Yes. Alligator, which... Alligators, which are only in the U.S. and China, are less aggressive than crocodiles, but can still be dangerous. In the U.S. state of Florida, 22 people have been killed by alligators since 1948. To which I say, step it up, alligators! <laughs> That's like 70 years? You've only killed 22 people? Yeah. And that's in a state where people are probably walking directly into the mouths of alligators. They're kind of everywhere in Florida. Like, yeah. it's, it's, it's weird and disturbing, yeah. That, that number's going to go up. <laughs> okay, okay. So clearly, I was wrong. Crocodiles kill more people than hippos. But let's keep it going, because this list had more animals. Okay. Now, dog lovers, cover your ears. Rabid dogs are responsible for the deaths of 25,000 people per year. Incredible. And that's just the rabid ones. Not to mention the ones that are just... <laughs> maul your face off? Yeah, just yeah. the ones that are angry. <laughs> Woke up on the wrong side of the kennel. Yeah. Uh, so, and then snakes. An estimated 50,000 people a year are killed by snakes. That's way higher than I would have guessed. I mean, yeah. It's, it's high. There's it's poisonous snakes here in Georgia. Yeah, but, but it's, it, don't you always find that people are like, ah, it's just a snake. They're more scared of you than it. Because like, yeah. of, uh, you know, the Bible and Adam and Eve. People right. hate on snakes, but people are always like, ah, oh, that's just a myth. Snakes, are, they're just living their own life. Because you, you know the statistic that most people that are bit by rattlesnakes, which are the, the main problem here where I live and in, in yeah. the American West and Southwest, most, uh, without rattlesnakes, sorry, forgot yeah. what I was saying there. The <laughs> bites, you would think they're on the ankle, right? Because that's the closest part to the snake. You'd, you'd think. Yeah, but and I hope I'm not doing face. another unconfirmed fact here, but the arm and wrist. And I think uh, it's because people go, oh, a snake. They go to touch it. Yeah, or try to fuck with it. Or they're right. like putting their hands like, you know, they're climbing like a little rock yeah. wall or something and the snake's inside. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, all that to say, I kind of thought over time, like, we, we shouldn't really be that scared of snakes. But if that was a fear that you've gotten rid of, go back to it. Okay? Snakes are dangerous. They are. And they're gross. <laughs> and they're gross. So, of course, here's the classic. The animal people don't name that kills the most people is the mosquito. a mosquito. Yes. Okay. 725,000 people are killed by mosquito-borne diseases. Jesus. Malaria alone affects 200 million people, of which an estimated 600,000 die. Mosquitoes also carry dang fever, yellow fever, and encephalitis. Fucking Bill Gates was right, man. Yeah. You wouldn't think about it. No. Like, Elon Musk would probably be like, we got to save people from the hippos. That's our number one priority. <laughs> Bill Gates is like, no, let's focus on the mosquitoes. Let's get yeah. nets there. Yeah. I mean, uh, really is an intervention that is, like, so needed and yeah. such a simple thing that you don't think about. But 
Stop focusing on the hippos. Stop focusing on the crocodiles. Focus on killing as many mosquitoes as you can. Yes. Are mosquitoes important to the ecosystem? I mean, really? Uh, you know, it's like you're right. It's in the way people are scared of bees. But yes. then we're like, hey, we're losing the bees. Yeah. Be nice to the bees. They help right. us. Yeah, Even yeah. spiders. Yeah. Spiders are killing the mosquitoes. Well, that's that's the hope, right? Yeah, well, I don't know if mosquitoes are doing anything, and I'm I'm not going to look it up. I don't think they are, but, um, you know, there's there's services you can get around here that people get. Like, it's like you bug bomb around your yard or whatever, and it's just like, isn't that just killing all of the bugs and stuff, like bees included? Bug bomb? <laughs> Or whatever, you know, it's like it's treated with some sort of pesticide, I'm sure, to keep mosquitoes away from your, your home, which I desperately want to have because the mosquitoes here are insane, but also I don't want to get because I feel like it's an environmental disaster. Yeah, and I also I say books, not bombs. Educate the mosquitoes. <laughs> each one, teach one. Yes, Tell teach them, they them about somewhere else. vegetarianism. They should be uh, feasting on beets and, and things like that. Couldn't have said it better myself. Uh, but, J.D., this uh, sort of myth-busting <laughs> gave me an idea for a segment that I'm going to launch right now. Okay. It's called, Is This True? Oh, okay. Okay, so these are, again, the most limited amount of research possible. These are all based on one article from Insider from 2019. <laughs> so I'm going to tell you the myth, or not, not the myth, but the thing that you've grown up believing and I want you to tell me if it's actually true or not true. Okay, cool. I like this. Okay, so... A penny dropped from the Empire... Let me try that one again. A penny dropped from the top of the Empire State Building can kill you. I'm going to say myth. That's correct. Funny you should say myth because the resource they cite is Mythbusters. And I don't know if that's... Oh. Okay, but they say, <laughs> on Mythbusters, scientists determined that a penny traveling at terminal velocity yeah. cannot penetrate concrete or asphalt it won't cause serious damage to a person even at the speed of sound will not damage flesh at most wow. it would sting a little okay. i don't believe that but who might argue with the must <laughs> the, the musters the well, busters of myths the, the busters of myths uh well what do you mean like it hits a terminal velocity it's only so heavy it's, it's just gonna it doesn't speed up and speed up exponentially as it's falling so I know, but I feel like I've been hurt by pennies. Just you've been hit. Like, what by if you penny? had a penny gun? Imagine a penny gun. Okay. <laughs> a gun that shoots pennies. Okay. I'm not talking about like a Smith and Wesson you've retrofitted, like a novelty gun, like in the way they have those guns that shoot out like fake bills, like for yeah. making it rain or whatever. Yeah. yeah. Okay, a gun that shoots pennies. But at the Wouldn't velocity, but the at the velocity of a regular gun. Well, I don't know. Is that possible? Anything's possible. It's just the how you do the barrel, no? I, I, I don't what what is your question? Know. What would I look like, Wayne LaPierre? <laughs> Are you, you're saying, like, <laughs> if I threw a penny at you, would it hurt? Yes, it probably You're on top would. of the Empire State Building. You drop yes. a penny. I'm yes. below, about to go upstairs to meet you, sleepless in Seattle style. Uh, yes. And I say, <laughs> I say, my eyes are very dry. Just before I go up, when I meet JD, who's going to be the love of my life, I'm going to put some eye drops in. So I tilt my head back. Yeah. <laughs> the penny goes straight through my eye socket. Wow. Into my brain, die instantly. You're saying not possible. I'm, I'm saying I'm agreeing with the Mythbusters and that it's not going to hurt you or kill you anyways. But if it landed on your eye, probably, you might mm. lose your eye. Okay, see, you're already starting to crack. You're already yeah. starting to say maybe it's possible. All right, next one here. You can see the Great Wall of China from space. What do you think? I think that one's true. NASA confirms that the Great Wall of China, frequently billed as the only man-made object visible from space, can't actually be seen from wow. the final frontier. Although the fact was debunked by Chinese astronaut Yang Liwei, the textbooks were never changed and will often still claim this as true. Fuck it. I want my yellow pie back from whoever, because that's a question in the original Trivial Pursuit. This man-made thing can be oh, seen yeah, in yeah, space. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I've Did I tell you about the greatest Trivial Pursuit uh, controversy that I ever had? <laughs> okay. It might be the same as mine, but go on. No, it was not with you. Okay. Have we played Are Trivial you? Pursuit? What? We played Trivial Pursuit at Oakham House many times. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, well, well you tell me yours. No, you, you go. You me? go first. Okay, okay, okay. So uh, this was in 
in CGEP, which in Quebec is like just before college, between high school. So we used to, you know, try to flex our knowledge a lot more in a more aggressive way than I care to do now. Yes. And so we'd play Trivial Pursuit. And it would be these death matches, right? Like, so into it, yelling and screaming at each other. The and best the final kind. question for, for the final pie that we needed to get, some call it a wedge. Yeah, we call and, it a pie. And uh, the question was something like, what did Marco Polo introduce to China or whatever, whatever? So the, and the answer is noodles. Yes. And I said, for some reason, I said pasta. <laughs> and they're like, oh, sorry, it's noodles. And I was like, no. And even though now I recognize I was wrong and shouldn't be given because we went by, it has to say what's on the card. Yeah. Rules, yeah. I would not let it go. I called, I called an Italian <laughs> restaurant. I put on speakerphone. <laughs> I said, Are, is pasta noodles? And they were like, what? <laughs> Why are you calling? <laughs> and I was like, see, see, they are noodles. But I was uh, wrong. Uh, yeah, you were wrong. So this was you, right? Right. So you didn't get pie, and you didn't win the game. Didn't win the game. Ouch. What was yours? Do you want to say it, or do you want to move on? No, I can say it uh, okay. real quick. It was actually not me. It was my brother who was playing uh, with – I was there, but I don't think I was playing. But uh, he – basically, he was asking the question. It was for the, it was for the game somehow. Mm -hmm. And the question was, what's, what's the – What's the inner, what's the national soup of Russia, right? Uh, which is uh, borscht. borscht. Yeah, okay. borscht. That's the answer. But Ryan, and this was there was uh, there was the uh, uh, beer tender that that you had to be the bartender for the rest of the day. It was at a cottage, right? So okay. so whoever lost had to be the bartender for the rest of the day and get the winners' beers. So he had the card in his hand and he said, "Nope, chicken noodle." And he put the he put the <laughs> the card back in, and everybody was like, "Oh, damn! Should have got it." And chicken noodle. Yeah, he said <laughs> chicken noodle, and the uh, the other team bought it. And oh my god! He didn't reveal that it wasn't actually chicken noodle until after the day of getting served beers by the people who lost. So always check the cards people always that's actually pretty check funny. the cards that's great and it's it's so hilarious that he said chicken noodle as well <laughs> i know i guess <laughs> i know it's, 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 like he might as well have said like gazpacho <laughs> yeah <laughs> like, what really interesting doesn't sound like a russian word gazpacho <laughs> all right okay uh i got one more for you here okay it takes seven years for your body to digest a piece of gum that sounds like a myth to me. That's right. It says gum will pass right through you. Leave your body within a matter of hours. According to Healthline, the ingredients in gum cannot be digested at all. So your body will move it along and pass it as a bowel movement. Now, here's a question. Uh, you probably don't know the answer, but this is a myth, I'm assuming. But it might not be. Uh, people will tell me. And I've always kind of believed it. As I was told by my fourth grade teacher, I think, that if you swallowed gum, uh, you it could get stuck in your appendix. <laughs> and then you could get appendicitis and have to get your appendix out. Okay, well, uh, what I was told that it was if you swallow it, a gum tree might grow inside <laughs> of you. <laughs> Yours sounds more plausible. It's a, it does, but I kind of also... I mean, I know that the appendix is sort of like a, a pouch of sorts, and it seems plausible that a piece of gum could go in there and then it could get infected, I suppose. But it was like I swallowed probably 20 pieces of gum trying to get my appendix to, you know, just, oh. just to get off school. Oh, uh, interesting. Not, not in a row, not in a row, but I would just like went through like a week and a half after I heard that to just... I just kept swallowing gum just to, in the hopes that I would have some sort of medical emergency and I wouldn't have to be you're, in you're school. You're like a, a teen in the 70s trying to avoid the Vietnam draft. That's right. <laughs> oh, I cut my wrist. I can't do the push-up requirements anymore. Uh, by the way, J.D., I tricked you in this segment. This article was called myths you think are true they are all myths oh they're all myths i should have yes. known when you kind of slipped up there at the beginning and i said, know, Here are I, some know myths I know for i know it. well i'll just tell people because people might want to know this it is a myth that you swallow eight spiders in your sleep oh, okay 
So this, this, this scientist says, spiders regard us much like they'd regard a big rock. If a sleeping person has their mouth open, they're likely snoring, creating vibrations that warn spiders of danger and will scare them off. So I guess this is like, if, if, you, if Rachel ever complains that you're snoring, you just tell her, babe, I'm keeping us safe from spiders. Yeah. <laughs> and, then, and then she'll rip that CPAP machine off your face real quick. <laughs> I kind of want one of those, to be honest. You don't have one yet? <laughs> you know what? F you. I'm actually getting a sleep study done, I think, in uh, August or something like that. So we'll see. Do you, think I'm, all I'm members, gonna... do you think all members of Duran Duran on the tour bus have a CPAP <laughs> machine? I do. Oh, a hundred percent. Actually, those guys looked pretty good. They looked pretty okay. good. Okay. Not now. Rogers good. No. Oh, what do you want? Sorry, Siri's going off over here. <laughs> okay, Jay just, Jay just got a text message. Uh, okay, well now that we're back to talking about Nile Rogers and Duran Duran, we've gone full circle. So that's all for today. Mm. Listen to next week's show. It comes out Monday. It's with Noah Garfinkel. Super excited to have him on. Yeah, very funny comedian. Very funny writer. Wrote on New Girl. A lot of people have watched that Kroll show. A bunch of other very famous shows. So he's coming on. Email us at isthisgoodpod at gmail.com. Subscribe everywhere. Leave a review on Apple Podcasts. This was JD and Matt reaching out from the great beyond. We'll see you next week. Thank you.